Hi guys. All right, so today we're going to be talking about glaucoma. And uh, just so you know, glaucoma is one of the top three reasons why people go blind and lose their eyesight. So typically when we have eye exams, that is one of the main things that we look for. And we wanna screen everybody out to make sure that they don't have it because it's what we call the silent thief of sight. And a lot of times there are no symptoms until it's in its, I would say, moderate to end stages. So let's go through a little bit of the anatomy, what causes glaucoma, and what we do about it. So here you will see, this is a zoomed in picture of the front of the eye. So here's where we are, okay? We're on the cornea, okay? And we've sort of taken a cross section, zoomed in on it, and that's what you see here. So this right here, this is part of the cornea, or this is the cornea here going all the way around. And then you have the colored part of your eye here. We call this the iris. Right behind the iris, we have the lens. And of course, the hole in your iris is called the pupil. That's where light passes through. This area here is called the ciliary body. Now, this might be kind of technical, but the, you know, the, the main thing that you need to know is that we have fluid that's constantly circulating in and out of this chamber. It's produced here in the ciliary body. It flows out where this, you see this arrow here? It flows out in the pathway of this arrow through the pupil into the what we call anterior chamber okay and then it's supposed to drain out through a structure called the trabecular meshwork which is here the trabecular meshwork we call it a meshwork because it that's kind of what it looks like it's like this netting almost it's like a filtration device and this ends up filtering out all of that aqueous humor and it's supposed to flow out through the systemic venous system, okay, so through your veins, and it'll go out to your regular, you know, circulation so that it can get cleaned up. And sometimes people's trabecular meshwork gets clogged up for whatever reason. We're not really sure exactly why that happens, but it does. And when that happens, there's nowhere else for this fluid to go. It's a, it's a closed system. It's a closed eyeball. So the pressure starts to rise. It builds up, it builds up, and that can subsequently cause the pressure um, to rise and it cause damage right back here on the optic nerve, okay? And this is the, the edge of the optic nerve right here. This, this basically goes from the eyeball all the way to the back of the brain for processing, okay? That's how we can tell what we see. And when we do an eye exam, okay, and we look at somebody's pressure, we measure the pressure, the normal range is anywhere from 10 millimeters of mercury all the way up to 21. But that doesn't necessarily mean that if you're not in that range, you're not normal. You know, if you have a pressure of 9, you're definitely low, but that, that could be normal for you. If you have a pressure of 21 or 22, that could be normal for you. So what's important is that we establish the baselines so that we compare them over and over, year after year. When you come in for eye tests, we always measure pressure to make sure that it is within the normal ranges for you. So what else do we look at? We look at pressure readings, and then we also look back here at the back of the eye. This is what the optic nerve looks like, this yellow structure right here. This is what the nerve looks like when you just look directly into somebody's eye through their pupil. Nowadays, we have very sophisticated technology that shows exactly what the back of somebody's eye looks like. And not only do we see the surface view, but we can also see um, more of like a cross-sectional type view and let me see if I can prop this up for you so you can see what I'm talking about so right here all right 
trying to show you the, the bottom of this poster here. Sorry about that noise there. Okay, so let's go, let's move forward here. So this is the cross-sectional view right here. And this structure right here that lays across the retina is called the retinal nerve fiber. And that retinal nerve fiber layer, when you start to develop glaucoma, will get very thin. So we have the ability nowadays to measure how thick the retinal nerve fiber layer is. And if it's too thin, if it's outside those normal ranges, will flag you as a glaucoma suspect. And the other thing that we look at is the actual head of the optic nerve, we call that. This is what a normal nerve appearance should look like. Notice that it's all filled in. This one, it looks like somebody just took an ice cream scooper and just took a chunk of tissue right out of the center there. We call that cupping. And when that cupping starts to show up, it's a warning sign, it's a red flag. It means that there may potentially be glaucoma there. So what we usually do next is what we call a visual field test. That's what you see here. This is essentially measuring your ability to see peripheral objects, so your peripheral vision. You'll sit in a machine, you'll have a button in your hand. Every time you see a light, a flash of light, you'll press that button. If you miss those flashes, it'll show up on this report as dark areas. That's basically telling us that you've developed blind spots in your vision. This person has a very characteristic upper half of their vision has been affected by their glaucoma. If you let it go and you don't do anything in terms of treatment, it will eventually turn into this. This person is basically going blind or already blind. This is what the nerve ends up looking like. Again, it's like that ice cream scooper. It's like they took the whole thing away, okay? Your entire nerve has just atrophied all the way through, so there's no nerve tissue left on the surface. And that's how you go blind, because you can no longer transfer the signal from the eye back into the brain to process. And this is all because this pressure regulation system is off. So what do we usually do to treat glaucoma? It's typically eye drops. They are considered topical medications and you put them in your eyes. It's usually at night, could be during the day, could be three times a day. Or Nowadays we have once a day drops, but if they stop working, you might have a, you know, another drop added to the regimen. And then you come back and you have this checked again and you have your pressure checked again and you have your nerve fiber layer measured again. And you, there's no cure for glaucoma, but you wanna to try to stabilize it. And um, it is, you know, sometimes it's a tricky thing to diagnose. There's not one specific test that we can do. There are numerous tests that you know, lead us into the direction of that diagnosis. So you do have to stay on top of it. This is, this is part of the reason why eye exams are so important. Not just because you need a new pair of glasses or contacts, but also because we are looking at the health of the eye every time and just making sure that things are functioning the way that they should, that your numbers look you know, correct and so forth. So that's just a, a brief little, you know, um, synopsis, a brief little uh, tutorial on what glaucoma is. There's, there's obviously much, much more to it, but I tried to condense things, and I did want to show you this nice poster. And um, if you guys, again, if you have any questions, if you are unsure about something, um, definitely write me a comment, and I'll try to help you out by answering. All right, hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time. Take care.